Hello and welcome. Today we will talk about the initial access when it comes to the OCP and all of the different things that you should keep in mind so that you're as prepared as you need to be when it comes to the OCP. So there are some key things that I want you to keep in mind. First of all, when it comes to initial access. Scan all of the ports and not just the default thousand that the map will do, right? Because you want to see all of the TCP ports. And not only for TCP, I also suggest to scan UDP as well, especially once you get stuck. And I also highly recommend that you rescan the target. And again, especially when you get stuck, because environments can be unstable. And sadly, I have heard horror stories of people failing the ATSAM because there was a port that actually was there, it just didn't show when the person scanned. Because in that moment, the environment was being unstable, and that person had to spend $250 for the exam date. So make sure you re-scan the, the target several times. Next up, fingerprinting. It's very, very crucial. So when it comes to scanning all of the ports, obviously, you need to get all of the information, so that's a great start. Uh, I also obviously highly recommend you do brute forcing for files and directories, right? Whether you use Scobuster or FF or WFAST or Door Search or whatever, that is completely up to you. But make sure that you have the methodology and that you don't forget it and make sure that you actually uh, scan with different word lists so you can get as much information as possible. And then I also highly recommend that you do stuff like if there's a random TCP port you haven't seen before, use netcap on it with verbose mode and see if it spits out any useful information by it. Maybe it was actually a web server on a really random port, but it didn't feel like a web server because of the port that then it actually is. Or maybe it spits out more information about the server it is or version that it is. So you can now use polygex policy against it. I also recommend checking for server headers because that can also need a specific response. I also recommend if it's a website to check which put possible content management system it is like WordPress, etc. And then I also recommend using tools like Webalizer, for instance. It's very, very useful. Sometimes that can give you good information. And many and just fingerprinting as much as humanly possible. You can also check source code. Also make sure you check the titles. Just basically constant to look for. Is this something that's custom built? Is this something that I can find online? Um, is this a vulnerable version? Is it not? And which pos and which public exploits can I find for the specific version, this particular framework, or whatever it? So, um, so that's very, very important. So there's constant to be fingerprinting as much as possible and take good notes. This is mostly it when it comes to fingerprinting. There's uh, obviously going to be more details here and there. Also, you can use tools like Mikdo and Handmap Scripting Engine, and also I suggest you use. Uh, service version enumeration and default scripts SVSD on that map and again check all of the ports and then other than that it's really about knowing which vulnerabilities can lead to RZE and which one won't and I'm really focusing on those local file inclusion LFI is very important because that can lead to shell with either noise poisoning or you being able to read a private SSH key the same thing with XXE if you have file read vulnerability there that could also lead to you reading a a SSH private key. As I said, LFI, you'd be more poisoning. Um, so definitely make sure you learn how to do that. Learn how to do command injection. Learn how to find and change public exploits to be able to get shell that way. That's also very important. If you're not comfortable reading uh, public exploits or you're not comfortable with Python, to just be able to read and modify basics without them, I highly recommend that you get comfortable with that. So find rooms, either through NetSite fo Focus or Lane Kusun idea, or look at try hack me for specific rooms that has public exploits. I would highly recommend that. <clears throat> and then also learn attacks like SQL injection. This is also very important because this could allow you to adopt database credentials and those credentials could be reused somewhere. You could also sometimes get a direct shell using SQL injection. That's also possible. That's mostly it when it comes to specific vulnerabilities. Other than that, it's really about doing a lot of volume. Take a look at our free OCP course, uh, or you can get the full one SSM, which is massive. Uh, make sure you develop your own notes. You can also get mine if you want, but it's whatever you prefer really. But having good notes is very, very, very important. Having an actual methodology is very important. And yeah, other than that, make sure you do an auto volume in initial access and a constantly 
reevaluate where your weak points are. So if you know that you cannot do SQL injection, and again, you have to do this manually, by the way, uh, because of SQL map is a banned tool on the exam. That's really my advice for you. If you follow all of this advice and you actually put in the, the volume training, then I definitely think that uh, this is part of the OCP can be covered initial access. And it's obviously something that you know will come and that you need to get good at. Really hope that helps. If you really struggle or do you need more personal advice, you can ask me in DDA. It's good, uh, but you have that access to the course, which you can join in the bot. I'll link it in down below. If literally just like, if literally it's my box, it's very, very cheap. I would probably increase it in the future, but yeah. Put in a box, you can try it for free for an entire day. And if you don't like it, that's all, that's all good. But if you do like it, then awesome. Then you can keep learning and keep asking me questions and people so far have been really, really liking it. And yeah. That's pretty much the plug for this video. I really hope this video was useful and that you found something in this that was uh, helpful to you. And I wish you the best of luck with your OCP journey. And I really hope you crush it as well. And uh, yes, I'm rooting for you. Thank you so much.